Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Play on GAA. We are back in our familiar setup. I am back from my holidays. I am back in Ireland. And I'm just going to do a quick video to talk about the news that Eamon Murray has stepped down as the Mead Ladies Football Manager. It happened yesterday. I'm just going to talk about, you know, what I see Eamon Murray as, what an icon he is for ladies Gaelic football, what an icon he is for the GAA as an organization. I mean, the work he's done as Mead manager, turning them around, it's one of the most, it's one of the most amazing sports stories I've seen, period. And it's absolutely incredible to go from where they were, 40 point defeat to Cork the year before he took over to when he leaves six years later back-to-back All-Ireland champions at senior level when they had never won an All-Ireland before. It's one of the most incredible stories that we've seen over the last 10, 20 years in our game. And I'm just going to walk through how he did it. I'm going to walk through what a legend he is and give my, you know, farewells to him because I'm going to miss him. I mean, I'm going to miss that Mead era because I think it is the bit of an end of an era. I mean, it's not just Murray that's gone. His coaches, Paul Garrigan, Shane Wall, they are both gone. Vicky Wall, I mean, that Australia move. They're going to be different next year, and I hope that they maintain their competitiveness. I hope that they are still the beast that they have been over the last two seasons. But yeah, before I get into this video, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. It really helps both of us out here on the channel. And yeah, let's crack on with this video. So Eamon Murray, a Cavan native from Gauna, coming into the Mead manager role at a time when, as I've mentioned, they were in the pits. 40-point defeat to Cork. And not only that, there were some familiar faces on the pitch that day for Mead. Vicky Wall was playing, for example. And they just got beaten out the gate. They got shown just how far away from the top they were. Cork at that time, you could argue maybe they were a bit better than they are now. Of course, they were All-Ireland champions. They were, you know, in a spell of pure dominance. They were in a spell where Dublin couldn't even beat them. It was, it was a weird little spell there where Dublin were getting to finals and they couldn't get over the line. Um, Cork were just so good back then but to put a 40 point beating on a team with the talent of Vicky Wall and pit players like that it really showed them how far they had to go then at the you know tail end of that year Eamon Murray comes in in 2017 and he brings in with him Paul Garrigan he brings in with him Shane Wall he brings in a new philosophy a new way of going about things and Mead start off just kind of steady in the ship a little bit they'd been on a downward spiral Murray kind of steadies it out. They're in Division 3. They're an intermediate championship side. They get promoted out of Division 3 as champions into Division 2. They play in intermediate football for a few seasons. But then in 2020, the first breakthrough comes. Murray has had a few years now, and he's put together one hell of a team. I'm talking the likes of Emma Duggan, the likes of Vicky Wall, the likes of Emma Troy, the likes of Avian Cleary, the likes of Shauna Ennis, the likes of Mary Kate Lynch, Monica McGurk and Goal, Orla Lally serious serious mead team and not only this they back it up on the pitch with results they win the intermediate championship and then they're into the senior championship in 2021 now this is why i like the ladies championship structure because the intermediate championship gave me and gave Eamon murray a chance to really build something that they felt then that they deserved their crack at the senior championship. They felt that they really had earned their place in the championship, that they weren't there to fill in a place, that they weren't there because of nostalgia and this is the way that it's always been. They'd earned their shot at the top teams. And when they got their shot at the top teams in 2021, by God, did they take it. 2021, they beat Cork in the All-Ireland semi-final. And then in the final, they faced the all-conquering Dublin team that were looking to complete a historic five in a row. And Mead stopped them. A cracking goal from Emma Duggan. Was she going for it? Who knows? But outstanding performance as a real clutch pointed towards the end from Nevo Sullivan. I'll never forget that score as a Dublin fan watching. But... Meath got the job done that day and were the story of the summer. All-Ireland senior champions in their first real year in it in the last 10 years. And All-Ireland senior champions. Incredible. Their first All-Ireland title after coming up from the intermediate championship. No one would have seen that coming at the start of the season, especially in the final. Everyone was tipping Dublin to win it. And then they win it. Incredible. Then in 2022, they go into the championship completely in a different position because now they're going in and they're not the underdog. They're now a Division I team. They're All-Ireland champions. Can they do it again? You bet you they can do it again. Not only do they do it again, they win the league, first of all. They win the Division I title. And then they go into the championship 
where they, I would argue they did it almost in a way that champions do it. They were poor at stages. They were lucky to get out of jail in the quarterfinal and the semifinal. Emma Duggan clutched up in both games at crucial, crucial, crucial times against Galway, kicking the winner against Donegal, kicking crucial scores in the last 10 minutes. They get to the final where they face off against Kerry. And not only a Kerry team that are coming with all this momentum, but have players like Louise Murahertig, like Chief Roche, like Neve Carmody, like Paris McCarthy. And Meath put on an exhibition in the final. Absolutely sensational performance. A real, real fitting end to the Eamon Murray era. Meath, All-Ireland senior champions, once again, two in a row. And they go down, in my opinion, as one of the greatest stories, one of the greatest teams that we've seen in the GAA because of where they've come from, the way that they've captured the fans, the way that they've brought interest to the games. I mean, Meath, with the Vicky Wall and with Emma Duggan, they were so marketable for the ladies Gaelic football. Like they brought in a lot of eyeballs. That rivalry with Dublin had, you know, has still has real potential to be a massive catalyst for an increase in attention, an increase in interest in the ladies game, which can only help. And I hope Vicky Wall comes back and is still as good from AFL. I hope, um, I hope that this rivalry continues. But what a day it was for me. I mean, sensational victory. Eamon Murray then, obviously recently in the news, he has stepped down. He has hung up the bib as Bonnestor of this Meath football team. Incredible. Just absolutely incredible. I've said it over and over again. My respect for this man, my respect for this team is through the roof. Where they've come from to where they are now. And I hope that whoever comes in, they have massive shoes to fill, but I hope that they can fill them. And I hope that the era of success for Meath continues. Um, that's my thoughts on his reign. I think he's been absolutely sensational and one of the greatest for sure. Uh, that's the video, guys, here on Play on GAA. I'm back in Dublin. So I hope you enjoyed. Until the next one, take care.